So welcome to episode two of our Vue.js nested forms with Rails episode. The last episode we actually went through all of this where we set up Webpacker and all of that so that we have this nested form that works pretty nicely. We can have um, several of these records that we would add and we could be removing them if we decided, oh, we didn't want that player. And we now need to be able to submit this to the database and that's gonna give us the ability to persist it and then we can go work on editing this form um, where it's very similar but we want it to function a little bit differently in a few different cases. So let's dive in to what we've got so far. So first off, we have replaced the Rails form with this content tag and the ID of team form. So Vue will mount this. We've also given it some data that we can load into Vue uh, initially, and this is gonna be, for the most part, uh, empty objects that we have at the beginning for creating a new record. And then we've actually implemented our view HTML template right here inside of the HTML. So our view code for this is actually um, getting sort of long, but most of this is setting up our view app. So this is actually taking all the data and getting it ready for view, and then we simply set that as the data set for view, and we are good to go. We also added a add players function, which simply pushes an item onto the player's attributes array. And um, this dot team players attributes, we splice a single record out of it. Um, and this should probably be this dot team players so that we are always uh, accessing that variable appropriately. So that did work without this, but we probably want that in there. So the next piece that we need really is we need a submit button. So if we had a, you know, BR down here and we want to save team, we would want to add a save team function down here save team function. It doesn't need any parameters. And in here, we need to make that post request to the teams route in Rails and pass in all of our team data. Now, view resource is gonna make this pretty easy for us. And so what we can do is we can say, we want this dollar sign HTTP, which is what view resource gives us when you use view.use view resource. That's going to give us that uh, variable and we can say post to teams and our parameters for this is gonna be a team is this dot team and that is then going to be closed off and then we have a function to handle a successful response and we also have a function to handle a failed response. So we'll say console.log response on failure and we can handle errors however we like. Um, the most logical thing here is to actually take the errors and put them inside of the view state so that the view app can show those errors and we'll talk about that in the future. But for now, this is gonna do what we need and we can close this off. And we'll also say from here, we'll console.log the response when it's successful as well because we want to redirect after it has successfully saved. So if we go give a test team, we add myself as a player, and now we click save team. Um, nothing happens, but you will see that we get a console.log for response from the URL slash teams um, that was okay is true, status 201, status text was created. So we know that it was successfully created and we really would like to redirect to that team. So here inside of the body, you can see there's the ID of one, and it actually gave us a URL, but it gave us the URL to the .json version of it, and we want to redirect to the HTML version of it. So we can either modify the way that that URL gets generated and change the format for it, or we could just link to team slash one it is up to you how you wanna do that. But when it is successful, we want to redirect to that. And we have two options. We could do window.location equals, say, teams. And then you could, uh, since we have access to this, we might as well do the fancy response.body.id here. 
with the interpolation. We could do this. The other thing is we could do turbolinks.visit and go to that URL. Because we have turbolinks available to us, we might as well do something like that. So if we give ourselves a second team with uh, Chris as another player, we can save team and we go to teams two and Turbolinks has done the navigation for us. So this is really great. We get to use all the Turbolinks goodness that we get and this is going to maintain all of the uh, window history and all of that because we're using Turbolinks and it is just a good way to go about it if you're using Turbolinks uh, as well. So that works pretty nicely. We don't have the ability to see if we actually got those players saved. So let's go to the team show page and here let's do players and let's go through each of those. So at team.players do player and we'll do a div player.name and a closing div and we'll have Let's do an HR to separate. And I forgot dot each here. And if we save that and go to the browser, we should see that we get the players' names listed out. But if we hit edit, um, this works pretty well. But if we do like the remove there, it's not going to actually remove the player uh, correctly because actually what you see here is that we created a new team entirely, which uh, wasn't the plan whatsoever. So our team two, uh, is still there. We didn't remove Chris, but we actually created a whole new team. So we have to go modify our view code quite a bit, even though it appears to be working pretty well, it's not. And that is because we need a different URL for the update. And that should go to teams two instead of to slash teams. And it should be a put request or a patch instead of actually making it as a post request. So we have some modifications to make to our view code. And I would like to make it so that if you remove a player who currently exists, we just display that undo because that is more useful for us when we are editing a team. And we're like, well, we need to remove this player, but it's useful for us to see which ones we're removing versus which ones we're adding. Probably the best place we can start though is to actually check inside of save team if there is an existing team in the database or not. So if we check this.team.id equals null, then we know that it's a brand new team and we can do our post request. Now, if it isn't, then we know that we are updating an existing team and this should actually be a put request. Now, one thing that we want to do is we want to put to the team with the ID and the URL. So if we change this to use the interpolation syntax, we can do teams and the dollar sign this.team.id and that will make a put request to that URL and we should be set. So this is gonna allow us to uh, edit an existing team or to create a new team. Now, this can be cleaned up a lot, so I'm gonna leave that up to you as a challenge, but we are going to do it quick and dirty right now. And what we wanna do is test this out here and see if I was to change my name and hit save team. We go back to the correct team slash two and the player has been updated appropriately. So that is good. We now have that ability to edit existing records. And if we were to add a player, so we say Bob and we click save team, Bob has now been added to that team. But if we wanted to remove Bob, we remove Bob and click save and Bob still exists. So this is because we have to pass over that underscore destroy flag. And so really our remove button should actually check to see if the player has an ID. And if they do, then we set that flag. Otherwise, we actually just remove them from the array. So this is our remove player code and really we need to grab that player. And so if we say this.team, Dot players attributes and we grab the item from that index here we can now ask it if player dot ID equals null and then we can handle the splicing and the other option for us then is to figure out how to do that flag for destroy now this isn't too bad it's actually pretty similar players attributes 
We want to grab the player by the index and we call underscore destroy equal to that string of one. So that is all we have to do to set that flag. And going back into our browser, if we actually pull up the player's attributes for Bob and display that here, we see that it is null by default. And then we click remove and that didn't really update immediately, but it does show if we uh, refresh the data in the view thing. So it actually has been updated. Um, it didn't instantly reflect it here, but Bob has actually been um, removed or will be removed when we click save team. So he did get removed, but our view app doesn't actually understand what the destroy flag should do. And there are some options for us. So one is that we could say V if, uh, V if, player dot underscore destroy is not equal to that string of one and we can display this and have that go here so if we click remove player the chris2 player has been removed we can refresh the view template down here and we'll see that destroy is set to one and that player is still there so it will still be submitted to Rails, but it will get destroyed when Rails sees that flag. So that works, but it's not the most intuitive because there's no way for us to know who already exists that we removed and it isn't the best user experience. So what I really want is two different things here. So I want a div v else that wraps these. And if the player has been marked as to be destroyed, then we can just display that player's name, player.name will be removed. And here we can display that and we can click that and that will show that Chris2 will be removed. So this works really, really nicely to be able to work with any of these and use if statements in view code and uh, have those templates change. Now, of course, we can click remove, but then we have no way to undo it. And it's especially important if we have this uh, visible that we should be able to remove or undo that. So we can add a button in here uh, as well called undo. So we'll grab this button code and we'll paste that up here as well and change the name of that to undo remove and we'll pass in the index for that. And let's actually go down here as well and separate out each of these players with the horizontal line. We now need to add that undo remove here. We have the function and the index and the code for this is actually incredibly simple. We can grab this line where we set the flag and we can actually just change this to null. We don't need to look up the player because we can already assume that if you were able, you were, if you were able to click this button, then that player must have already existed in the database because of the layout. Always only showing this button when the player has been marked as destroyed. So we know that that player is going to be in the database. That way, this code can be a one-liner, and there is no conditional here either. So if we go back and we hit remove. Chris2 will be removed, we click undo, and it goes right back to that form where we can edit and we can save. So we can have Bob here, save the team, Chris and Bob, Bob2, let's remove Chris, hit save team, and Bob2 has been updated and Chris has been removed. And we can see all of those reflected in the Rails logs. If we go down to the very bottom, you will see there is a delete for um, Chris and then update to the Bob record to name him Bob 2 and so all of this we know for sure is updating the existing records because we're passing in those IDs appropriately our parameters match up exactly with what rails would normally expect if you were using cocoon or another nested form um, method of doing things, even if you built it from scratch with your own JavaScript, you could go ahead and build something exactly like this and it would just pass in these attributes the same way. So we are taking care of all of that using Vue and we did a little bit of naming hacks to make sure that our players attributes here um, were set correctly. Now, the one thing that we have yet to do is the unpermitted parameter ID. And this is just that 
We are submitting the ID of the team, which is not allowed to be changed. And that we do want to remove from our uh, post and put requests because that is a field or a column that we don't allow people to change. So one solution for that would be to add the ID here and we can pass that team.id in and we can accept that from the team that we'd be submitting to uh, Rails for the form submit. So we can pull that out of this team object and then our JavaScript can simply change the way that it checks when it's submitting that URL. So if we look for this.id uh, in both of these cases, then our post or our put will use the appropriate ID and the only other thing we'd have to do is assign that to element.data set.id and pass that in as part of our initial data that goes into view uh, when it loads up. So if we do that, then we should be able to hit edit and we should be able to then um, bob234, hit save, and taking a look at our Rails logs, we don't get any unpermitted parameters anymore. So you do have to keep in mind those because when you're doing the JSON dumps into that, uh, we need to do it the same way that a Rails form would do, but a Rails form doesn't actually need the ID except when it generates the URL of the form. And the same goes for our view code, but we need to get that ID somehow. And the best way is not actually to put it inside of the team JSON object, it's actually to have it separate. So that is one solution for that problem. And there's a lot of things we can improve here and clean up, but I wanted to walk you through that process of building out a nested form with Vue.js where we can go and create a brand new team, like a Go Rails team, and add Chris to it. We can hit save, create it, and we can use the exact same view code to go and edit the team and the players and all of that stuff and it will work uh, just as you would expect it. And actually, I think that our code for this turned out really, really nicely because while this is quite a bit of stuff to handle all the options, that form is actually fairly complex because you have the uh, adding players, removing players, the undoing of a remove, and you have the submit to Rails and all of that layout stuff has been nicely written in the same form file as your Rails form would have been as well. So all of this code is actually where you expect it. So if you were to go change the way that the form looked, you could just dive into this and you know that this is going to change the way the form looks. So that works pretty nicely and does the job and gives you the ability to go and use Vue.js for complex things like a nested form without having to go the full single page app route and diving into Vue router and JSON web tokens and forcing your app to be an API and then doing pre-rendering so that you get SEO and all that stuff. That is a lot of work to do when you could actually just drop this in in those little locations where you need something a little bit more complex. So that is it for this episode. I hope you like this two-part series on Vue.js and nested forms. Um, if it was useful, let me know. And if you wanna see more of this stuff, let me know uh, any suggestions or topics that we can dive into more. I'm having a lot of fun using Vue alongside of Rails without doing the single page app uh, approach. And I'd like to explore that some more. So let me know if you have any ideas and we will get on to those in the future. Peace.